Hey, Steve Trimble, and today's field link tip number 17 is scan to Tecla. How to quickly and easily capture scan data in the field and send it directly to Tecla for stair modeling. So you can see we got about three scans here, X7 or X9. Either way, this probably would have only taken about um, 10 minutes to collect. Um, and then I'm going to actually send the data over, show you how to prep it. And really, there's not much prep at all, but how to send it from field link in the tablet to uh, my actual colleague, David Heidman, a uh, Tecla or, uh, modeling guru, who's going to show you how to then design those stairs. Um, as you can see here, the, really the, the huge accuracy of scanning is, uh, or the huge advantage of scanning is the accuracy. Um, one and a half, two millimeter accuracy. And then the other thing is one trip measurements, because you're going to see anything the scanner sees, it's going to collect. And so you can register around and collect multiple scans to see everything that's there. But you're never going to need to take multiple trips out to site. Um, as long as you went there the first time and scanned it, you're going to know where this beam is, so you can design around it. And some of the other big advantages of the Trimble in particular is the ability to refine and really do all your processing on the tablet. So after you collect, you can see these lines are showing the registration between those scans. Um, I can actually refine it and see the overall accuracy of that point cloud, about 0.3 millimeters. So very accurate indeed. Um, then usually what I would like to do is so I've we've had a number of videos showing you how to scan the automatic registration, then refine. Um, before I send it to Tecla, one thing I like to do first is actually set it to an origin point. So I'll create a zero, zero point, just like that. Um, and then it's going to actually tell me my refine's breaking because it thinks I'm going to register. I'm not. I'm actually going to move all the scans, so I won't really mess with that refinement at all. Um, I can zoom in, change the center of rotation, and set this to where I want to. So I can actually start to align it in the X and Y. And then the Z. And what that does is when I send it to Tecla, it puts it in an origin plane that is familiar. So David's actually going to show you how to redraw the grid lines uh, to fit the scan data. Uh, but this is something that will usually prep it. The other thing I can also do here is create points from the scan data, either in the um, uh, station view like you're seeing here. Or I can actually do this in the 3D view as well, too. So. Let me go back one because I didn't want to move that. I want it to go here. And we'll look at that beam one more time. I've created a section box on it. Um, maybe we'll bring this in a little bit. You can actually see those that second point I created right there. I can do the same thing from this 3D view. So all that's going to do is give me kind of reference points within Tecla that I can go off of. So. After I refined, I set everything to a grid coordinate before I send it to David. I will also just prep it by making these little section boxes. So this is breaking up the scan data um, to whatever I'm seeing here. And then I can go to scan export and like this north wall, I can actually export it as a non-structured. If I was going to Autodesk, I could send it as an RCP, but E57 is going to be a lot smaller and a lot quicker of export. So this is really my prepping and what I'll hand over to David and what you're going to see modeled here in a minute. So after all this data is sent on the tablet, I transfer it via connect um, or with a thumb drive. Either, either will work. I'll send over those other ones. You can see scanning took about 10 minutes, exporting and prepping another five to 10 minutes, and then obviously transferring it um, will be the next way. But David's going to end up designing uh, the, the stairs. And before we actually, um, before I pass it over to him, I'm going to show what David's stairs look like in field link and actually how to run a, a clash detection back in the field. So you probably went out and scanned, then did some design, um, but the field may have changed. So before I pass it over, this is actually putting the cart before the horse, what it, what David's designs kind of look like back in field link here. And you can see, if I look at just these wall, this is where they align and overset. And then one thing I can do that's nice is He'll actually take into account this bump out, but I can also just run an inspection here in the field again. Um, so if I had the model and I had to design, I could actually run a comparison to what they handed over to see how bad it was or how much it wasn't like they represented. Um, but you can see like this, this kind of stone wall out that we're going to have to make a smaller platform. Now, David takes that into account when he's modeling. Um, but that's something just to show here as far as, oh, we might have an issue right there with when we go to install that. So. Uh, thanks, and here's David. So in this brand new model, 
First thing I want to do is verify that I've got my point clouds available to me. And then I'm going to go ahead and attach them. Uh, you can drag and drop multiple point clouds, and I've added these before, so they come in pretty instantly. Um, normally, there would be a few minutes for those to process. Uh, at this point, though, what I want to do is set up my, my space to work, um, basically setting up my grid. And I'm throwing in a quick slab to represent my floor, and I'm going to turn on the walls that were measured uh, with the scanner, and I'm going to throw in some clip planes so that I can identify a point on this wall or a section of this wall that I'm going to use for my grid. So you can see here that I'm slicing down a pretty small section of the wall so that when I flip into a plan view, I'm getting sort of a very distinct area here, and I can measure along the width, and I can measure along the height, and then I can go ahead and also measure the elevations from one of those walls um, using this Inquire Point Coordinates tool. It's kind of nice. You can just pick a point and it shows you your X, Y, and Z. So right here I'm just making note of my Z elevations. So between the measurements of the cloud that I'd clipped and the measurements for the height of those door openings, I was able to set up this grid and then create my views based on this grid. So now I'm going to open up an elevation view and we're going to start laying out our stairs. And this is a little misleading because of the way the wall kind of has a, a cup or a curve on the side, the way the scan was put together. Um, that'll become a little bit more apparent here in a moment. But I'm using a stair layout with landing tool right now to help me measure and set up my nosing lines for the stairs that I'm trying to put within this, um, this opening. So there I just picked two points to create one. Now I'm going to set up a couple of different height elevations. I'm going to turn this cloud off so I can see the grid line a little bit easier and just stack that guy on top of itself a couple of times to lay out the nosing line here. And if I turn on some of those clouds, once again, we can sort of get context as to what's going on here. And hopefully you can see there the, the kind of a cup of a foot or two that made it a little difficult to see what was going on in a side view. <clears throat> but now that I've got that stair nosing line laid out, I can go ahead and set up my stair. I'm gonna keep this pretty simple. I'm just welding a stair together. I'm going to offset it to the left plus a couple more inches. And um, initially you can just put in sort of the default dimensions. You can set up those dog legs a little bit ahead of time. In this case, I'm putting in the default and then I'm just starting to manipulate those dog legs based on the extensions that I've got here from my nosing to my grid line, which is supposed to represent, of course, um, one part of the wall. So now I'm just going through and I'm setting up different um, stair settings. I'm turning off that top tread and the support brackets that's uh, no longer required. And I'm going to use those settings as a starting point to start to work my way up to the next level. Um, there you can see that the dimensions aren't quite right, so I'm going to go ahead, double click on it, make a little adjustment here, change that from six foot down to five foot two. I can also make adjustments for the bottom of the stair, saying that I actually want that point to have a tread on it. Um, and I can start to use the 3D view, use the properties dialog box here to make adjustments um, as needed to the bottom of this stair. If I flip to an elevation view here, you'll actually see that I have to drop that um, dog leg down. So I'm just measuring to see what the difference is. That's supposed to be six and seven eighths. So I make that little adjustment there. I'm also gonna adjust the bottom pan on the upper stair so that it comes down deep enough and extends out um, where I'm eventually gonna add a support member there. So here I'm just throwing some extra construction lines, sort of laying out my nosings a little bit better. And um, again, I'm just going to reuse those same settings to put in the next couple of runs of stairs. Of course, adjustments can be made. I can see already that I'm going to need to do that. But this just helps me get those in um, in their initial position. And because I have it offset to the left, you can see that each time I create a new run, it is kicking it in one direction or the uh, other. So here I'm just making some dog leg uh, adjustments. Um, Right now, this is still just kind of roughing it in. I would still open up each level and, and really fine-tune that, which I'll show you here in a moment, starting with this bottom level. But you can do this on each level. Um, this is where taking something like a cloud scan really shows you 
some detail that may otherwise be missed. In, in this section, we've got a bump out. There's like this stone or um, some kind of you know foundation um, level material that's making it really difficult to get an idea on how this landing is supposed to fit in. Um, I'm making a new plan view so we can actually see this landing in a little bit more detail and, and plan this out uh, a little more. Uh, so I'm going to turn that cloud back on, throw in some clip planes again. You can get a, a general idea of that bump out. It just happens to be right where I'm trying to place my landing. But you know what? That's the real world when you're doing this kind of stuff. And those clip planes really make things easier um, to show that sort of context. There we can really visualize that bump out that we need to try to avoid. Now, of course, I'm going to have to issue probably some RFIs to plan this out. But I'm at least going to get some steel roughed in here. Uh, I'm just going to throw a quick one inch offset and then throw in a, a channel um, to act as the back support for this landing. Eventually we're going to want to support this in some way, probably um, to either end to the CMU walls that are there. Um, but you know, for this example, I'm just trying to do some rough mock-ups and show how we can make adjustments, you know, pulling those dog leg backs, dog legs back, excuse me, so that they actually frame into that um, that C channel that I put there. And again, just showing some different examples of what's possible. I'm just throwing some uh, basic clip angles in here, changing the number of bolts, offsetting the plate to the other side. Obviously, you can mix and match this sort of thing up depending on what kind of framing you're trying to do, what the designs call for, um, and then obviously what kind of uh, connections your company likes to use. So at this point, um, we're going to go in and add some deck support angles. I'm going back to that plan view. Again, this is something I could do later, just showing some examples of the type of framing I can do. So I'm throwing in a, a four inch deck support angle that I've got dropped four inches for slab depth. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and put in a stitch weld here, um, just a both side intermittent stitch weld. Again, just trying to show the levels of detail that we can get to in this 3D model. Uh, at this point, I'm putting in some finishing details at the bottom of the stringers. There's a couple of different options. This one just closes it off with some plates and holes for expansion bolts or epoxy anchors or however you're connecting to the floor there. And then we can go ahead and start turning on some other walls and just get it, get some context for, uh, in this case, I'm going to put in some wall rail brackets. Um, so I'm just going to go from nosing to nosing on this lower stair, moving kind of quickly here. And you can see that throws in a basic rail. Uh, I'm going to flip the position of the brackets over so that they obviously make sense for this side. So that's what I'm doing right now, making those adjustments. And then I can rotate this around and do the same thing on the opposing stair, putting in um, another wall rail. And then in this case, you know, once again, flipping over those brackets to the other side. And at this point, I could open up a plan view, make sure that they're lining up with the wall exactly. Um, but, you know, in this case, just kind of trying to keep it simple, as I mentioned before. Putting in another piece of uh, supporting steel just referencing off the stringers that I have here. Um, I would go in and probably put some connections in, um, but we're just showing some of the drag and drop tools now where you can make those adjustments to other steel in the area. Uh, and then I'm going to go back to an elevation view so I can try to do some cleanup at the ed end of these stringers. I'm keeping it simple, just notching them out to bear on top of this. Um, but you could, of course, uh, you know, put some bolted connections or, you know, there's, there's many different ways that you could handle this situation. Uh, this is just kind of a quick and dirty way to clean up those center uh, inner stringers that we've got on each stair. And I'm going to put a little closure plate on here just for fun so we don't have an open hole. Uh, if, you know, if they go in to fill this in with concrete at some point, we're going to have to provide some sort of enclosure. And next, I'm going to put in some actual handrail on the inner stringers. Um, so in this case, I'm loading up the stanchions tool, which is going to start at the bottom, uh, work my way up, and put in some simple inch and a half pipes, uh, make some adjustments to the spacing here before applying a picket rail to the entire thing. Uh, so switching from S76 to S77, loading a picket rail preset. You'll notice in that drop down, there was a lot of different presets to start with. And then I can pull out that clip plane a little bit to see the next stringer in line and go ahead and repeat the same thing. Just putting in um, some posts, some stanchions there, turning on the uh, uh, picket rail as well to apply that to these. And, and this is just the sort of thing that you would start to work your way up one floor at a time um, from bottom to top. 
One last quick thing that I wanted to show here is the um, clashes that you can check for using the point cloud visualization and tech structures. Um, the field link t uh, software has its own functionality for this that's probably a little bit more crisp, um, but you can you know turn on the sort of heat map to see the clearances um, if you make sure you're not hitting anything. Um, and then, you know, just this last final shot here to show you some context of the steel that I've made so far against the scans of the building.